Hello and welcome to the episode 153 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Some of the stories featured today include the first ever concert of the Beatles, three recording sessions, and two different coming back homes. On the 2nd of June 1960, the Silver Beatles performed at the Institute in Neston, England. The date was arranged via promoter Les Dodd, who had organized events at the venue since 1936, and Alan Williams, who was serving as a de facto manager of the band. While he openly disliked rock and roll, Dodd had recently come to realize that those nights were more profitable than his usual strict tempo jazz affairs. Paramount Enterprises, Dodd's company, paid the band £10 for the night, equivalent to £240 in 2020 money. In turn, the band gave £1, equivalent to £24 in 2020 money, to Alan Williams as payment for his services. Despite the venue being particularly rough, with abundant occurrences of first fights and other acts of violence between patrons, the concert went smoothly. Fun fact! While the lads were still using the name The Silver Beatles at the time, the Hiswell and Neston Advertiser newspaper reported on the concert calling the band The Beatles, B-E-A-T-L-E-S. It was the first time ever that name was used for a performance of the band. According to the paper, the band was comprised of John Lennon, Paul Ramon, Carl Harrison, Stuart Style, and Thomas Moore. In 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed another night at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing second residency in town. In 1962, the Beatles flew back to England from Hamburg on a Lufthansa plane. They landed in London, got a connection flight to Manchester, and then reached Liverpool by car. In 1963, the Beatles and the rest of the Roy Orbison package tour played their 15th date, this time on the stage of the Hippodrome Theatre in Brighton. Before leaving the live performance part of this episode for good, let me remind you once again to visit www.simonmas.com support at the end of the show. On that webpage, you will find a couple of ways in which you can help me to focus on the production of more and better music-related material. The best is that some of those ways are free too. So please, visit the site and show me how fab you are. Thank you! On the 2nd of June 1964, the Fab Four were busy in Abbey Road for two recording sessions taking place between 10 a.m. and 1.15 p.m. and 2.30 and 5.45 p.m. During the first session, the band put to tape seven takes of the rhythm track of any time at all. The Beatles realized the song needed further work on the middle eight, and it was consequently left unfinished to move to Things We Said Today, which was completed in two takes, the first of which was a false start. Take three, comprised of a second vocal track by Paul McCartney, and piano and tambourine overdubs. The afternoon session saw the start and completion of When I Get Home, with 11 takes, and the return of the band's attention on any time at all, completed with four additional takes featuring the middle eight and vocal, piano and guitar overdubs. In 1965, George Harrison, John Lennon and Ringo Starr attended the premiere of director Richard Lester's film, The Knack and How to Get It, at the London Pavilion Cinema. You will recall that Lester had directed the two Beatles feature films so far, A Hard Day's Night and Help, and would go on to direct How I Won the War, the 1966 solo acting debut of John Lennon. Moving on to 1966, starting at 7 pm, we find the Beatles again busy in Studio 2 at the EMI Studios in London. The order of the day was to record yet another song by George Harrison for Revolver. 
George was starting to develop his chops as a composer, but he still had problems with his titles. After Granny Smith, later renamed Love You Too, it was now the turn of I Don't Know, so named because when engineer Jeff Emerick asked what the title of the work was, George replied with I Don't Know. Later in the session the song acquired the name of Laxton Superb, another type of apple. In the end, it would become I Want To Tell You. The backing track for I Want To Tell You was recorded in five takes featuring George on lead guitar, Paul on piano, John on tambourine and Ringo on drums. When that part of the recording was completed, George overdubbed his vocals, with John and Paul singing their backing, and piano, tambourine and maracas all added to the rhythm track before a reduction mix. The procedure freed two tracks for further work, combining all the vocals on one track and all the instruments on another. Some hand claps were recorded on one of the three tracks and then the fabs moved to assisting the studio personnel with a rough mono mix of Yellow Submarine, whose completion wrapped up the session at 3.30 am. In 1967, the Beatles with George Martin returned at the Delane Leah Studios for a final session on It's All Too Much. The session served to record Paul Harvey playing bass clarinet and contrabass clarinet, plus David Mason and another three trumpet players. The work, starting at 7 pm, was meant to be concluded by 11 pm. It actually ended at 2.15 am. Like many of the sessions after the conclusion of the Surgeon Pepper's recordings, it was unfocused, with David Mason commenting that George Harrison was nominally in charge of the work, but clueless about what he wanted for the song, and George, years later, stating that I'm still annoyed that I let them mess it up with those damn trumpets. The song was left gathering dust for four more months before receiving a proper mix signaling that it was not considered good enough for the inclusion on the Yellow Submarine soundtrack. The Beatles decided to conclude the session with more unstructured instrumental jamming. As it had happened on the 1st of June, nothing ever came of that material. Finally, in 1969, John Lennon and Yoko Ono were expelled from Canada, after their appeal for getting a visa was rejected. This concluded their second bed in happening. This also concludes today's episode. Join us tomorrow for a serious malady falling onto one of the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.